These are my latest acquisitions. What exactly are these? These are four identical Tumi Alpha dop kits that you can fill up with all of the stuff for a weekend trip, your toiletries, your toothbrush, whatever the case may be. And they're very uh, scalable because Tumi makes these and they're always in stock. You'll notice I've got one for each uh, Nomad home. So BOG, I like my airport codes, BOG, Bogota, TBS, Tbilisi, got KUL, got TIV, and uh, hopefully some more to come. This is one of the steps in my lifestyle hacks. People are always asking, Andrew, you know, you have these uh, different homes, must they be complicated? We've talked before about managing real estate, but how do you manage your life living in different places? Whether you rent homes or own homes around the world, you're living my trifecta lifestyle where you're never in one place for too long. I'm gonna share with you some of my best lifestyle hacks for living as a nomad capitalist, just like these uh, travel bags in this video. Hey guys, I'm Andrew Henderson, and if you want to learn how to legally reduce your tax, live where you want as a global citizen, earn more money through global investments, and just go where you're treated best, learn more about how my team and I can help you at nomadcapitalist.com. Now, I showed you these uh, travel bags that I got because I want to talk about one of my newest lifestyle hacks. You know, I've been living the nomad capitalist lifestyle for many years. One of the things that I think is when you keep more of your own money, you can do a number of things. Number one, you can save more. Number two, you can give more. And number three, you can create a lifestyle infrastructure that supports being a global citizen, being a nomad capitalist. And so for me, I want to be in different places in the world. Uh, even before I discovered there's a tax benefit for doing that, I'm like, that's just how I wanna live. I don't wanna live in one place all year round. And so if you don't take some precautions, it can get confusing, okay? I'm not one of these guys who sells the, the laptop lifestyle, live on the beach, it's perfect, there's no problems. There can be stress. I've dealt with it. Let me give you some things that I've dealt with. These uh, DOP kits are a part of lifestyle hack number one, which is I am really making a move to try and avoid packing. Okay? So you have different homes. I've talked about before how, you know, let's say you have a house in, in Montenegro. Okay? It's a summer place in Europe. You stock that with things for the summer. I don't have winter coats there. You know, I don't have lots of black. Okay? I have things with nice nautical stripes. I have uh, you know, one or two sweaters. You never know when you might need it, but you have polo shirts, you have shorts, you know, maybe you have like a, a summer suit you stock for that. And so one of the things that I'm doing to avoid uh, packing is just keeping the right things in each home. Another thing that I'm doing with these is, let's say that you're in Tivat, T-I-V, and you wanna go up to uh, Trebinia in Bosnia for the weekend. You wanna go and, and do a wine tasting across the border. Well, what, what's been one thing that's been stressful for, for me when you're busy running a business and you're go, 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 and you don't leave yourself enough time to pack. And so, you know, you're taking your, your, your toiletries and maybe you don't have all the toiletries because you just got there and you're kind of trying to jam it in, you're buying stuff along the way. What I'm gonna do with these is fill them with everything you need. You know, I'm gonna pick, take all four of them, five of them, six of them, whatever, put the same toothbrush for the same everything in this bag, leave it in the house and don't move it, okay? I talked in the previous video about how um, I like to keep phone chargers for each place, you know, plugged in or sitting there in the nightstand. So when you come home, you walk in, you plug your phone in, you're ready to go. You're not fumbling through your bag. Oh, I forgot the adapter. This is the Malaysian one. Ah, no. Okay, this is not like the biggest problem in life, right? But it's something that when you're trying to move very quickly, you're running a big business or active business, you wanna solve this. And so another thing is stop fumbling around for stuff. One of the things that I think is stressful about traveling is lugging a bunch of luggage behind you. Uh, when I was doing the, the full you know, nomadic lifestyle, I literally dragged a suitcase behind me. Now for someone like myself who likes to have different shoes and different looks and, and, and I do uh, you know, put a bit of emphasis into having you know, different things to wear, uh, that was very restrictive, right? Um, but I did it and uh, it involved some repositioning occasionally, it involved some shopping along the way, but you know, eventually, you know, dragging a suitcase through, you get a, you know, just a lot of involvement. My goal, in the same way that Bill Gates wanted a paperless office, I want a suitcase-less nomadic life. And I think you can do that by stocking your homes, having everything you need, uh, and these uh, kits are one way that I'm doing that. Uh, stocking each home is the way to do that as well. All right, moving on. Nomad lifestyle hacks number two and number three may sound a little bit contradictory. 
I'm going to explain why they actually are more complementary. Lifestyle hack number two is have some of the same brands in each place. Reduce the stress, reduce the uh, fatigue of travel by having things that are familiar to you. So we once, many years ago, had a gentleman that we helped who had three different homes. He said, I buy the exact same coffee maker in each home. Now, I don't drink coffee, but if you're a coffee drinker, you know, having to fumble around with that is confusing. What's one of the most frustrating things about hotels that comedians talk about all the time? It's that not one of them has a uniform shower. It's not even like, oh, all of the Park Hyatts have the same shower. No, no, no. Like, none of them have the same shower. You're fumbling around. Where is it? Which one's hot? Which one's cold? There's three knobs. There's two knobs. There's a do it's, it's confusing, right? So if you're creating your own environment, which I believe for productivity and stress reduction is important to control your environment, you want to have some of the same brands. That could be the same coffee maker. For me, I like tea, so I buy these uh, TWG teas. They're all over Asia. In my suitcaseless life, one of the uh, few things that I would travel with would be some bags of TWG tea that I would take to you know, somewhere else where they don't have a TWG store. I would take you know the loose bags of tea and just pour them into my containers there. And now I have my TWG tea. So it's not an issue of, oh, I'm leaving Asia. I now have to drink this terrible European tea. Have some of the same brands. You know, maybe it's decor pieces. You know, I like to have some of the same travel books, the beautiful you know, Louis Vuitton uh, travel books you can get at the airport, you can get at the store. And it's just a nice little touch that kind of unifies the homes. For me, I like to have different flowers in each home. And so, um, you know, in every room you unify the house with the same flower, but then in every different house you have different flowers. I really think on a, on a sensory level as human beings, we want to have some kind of sameness. We don't want things to be too jarring. And when you're traveling a lot, you have a great opportunity to have a, a jarring existence. So you want to reduce that. So have some of the same brands. Could be any of those different things. Could be, um, it could be you know, having two different pairs of the same shoes, again, to avoid having to lug them between one and the other. Lifestyle hack number three is add a little bit of local touch within that, okay? So the Louis Vuitton travel books, you know, you might have the, the Moscow travel book in the, in the Tbilisi home and then the Beijing or Singapore travel book in, in Asia. One thing that I like that I keep uniform with the same brands is I've talked about these uh, Tom Ford private blend fragrances. So I just got this Cafe Rose recently. Uh, for Asia. I love the, um, the kind of rose scent. It's perfect for like the, the gentleman's club that I'm a member of here or just kind of going for an afternoon tea. It's a really nice kind of light scent. Uh, and that's very uh, Southeast Asia, very uh, kind of flowery and, and warm weather. And so I would have the same brand so that way it's easy to go and I can find the same brand of what I'm looking for for each place. But Maybe somewhere else you'd have an oud, or you'd have a different kind of fragrance. So basically what you're doing is you have different teas, different books, different whatever, within the same brand framework so it's less jarring. You're creating a sensory experience that I believe increases productivity. If you are a high-level you know, business owner, you're busy, you don't want to be confused. You don't want to be looking at different things. I really think that um, you know, much like uh, you know, the comedian Adam Carolla made a joke once about how flight attendants, when you're... When you're uh, when you're landing, they look for difference in the seat pitch. And so if both seats are back, they'll be less likely to see it. I don't think that's true anymore. But um, you just want less difference in your life when you're traveling. Lifestyle hack number four is don't force something from a place that it's not going to provide to you. Let me explain what I mean. So recently came from Georgia, landed in Malaysia. Now in Georgia, it's the birthplace of wine. They have tremendous wines. We had a dinner uh, with some folks who, who came for our uh, real estate masterclass, and we went to this beautiful restaurant, had one of my favorite wines, it's $7 a bottle at the restaurant. Um, and it's not, you know, it's just, it's just a great wine, and it's just, you can't really find like super expensive wines that are also affordable. Um, and that's a great thing about Georgia. Uh, you come to Malaysia, you know, $7, I mean, you can, it's you know, $700, it may not even be as good as some of the wines in Georgia that are $50, for example, because you have a tariff on, on wine here. I don't think it's really a wine culture. I guess parts of China might be a wine culture, but the bottom line is, don't come to much of Southeast Asia, in my opinion, and drink wine. Do your wine drinking when you're spending your time in Europe, whether it's Montenegro or Serbia or Georgia or France or Portugal or whatever it may be. To me, that's the place to drink wine. When you come here, if you like to drink, maybe more of a cocktail. If you like beer, you know, maybe you want to do that. To me, this is one of the benefits of the trifecta lifestyle is that uh, you know, you're probably not going to get very good Mexican food in Southeast Asia. 
I was just in Mexico. They have pretty good Mexican food in Mexico, actually. Uh, and so for me, the beautiful thing is when I'm here, I go to my, my beloved gem restaurant in the Brickfields. Oh, like some of the best Indian food you're ever going to have. And when I'm in Tbilisi, I'll have their food. And when I'm in Montenegro, I'm going to have fish. And, you know, if I'm in Mexico, I'm going to the, the street taco places. Uh, or I'm going to Harry's, or I'm going somewhere else, you know. So that's the beauty of this, is you don't want to force something in. You know, one of the things, you know, when I owned a home in the United States and I traveled a lot, I had different kinds of decor in the house that I've since backed off of. So, you know, I had an Asian decor in the bedroom. Uh, I had different kind of decor that spoke to the different places that I like. What I now like the idea of is let Asia be Asia. Let it be tall, glistening towers. Let it be light. Let it be sexy. Um, and if you want something that's a bit more... Uh, formal or a bit more classic, you go to Europe. If you want something a bit more, you know, sensual, uh, you go to Latin America. You can get it in different places. And so uh, the ability to not have to stay in one place year-round allows you to let each place stand on its own rather than trying to bring non-native uh, elements into the environment. Nomad lifestyle hack number five is watching your energy. Now that might sound a little bit woo-woo, but I think it's actually very important. And again, if you are a high-level entrepreneur, this is really important. So Malaysia, Southeast Asia, uh, I love it. I think it's a hidden gem. But here's the thing. I've been to every big city in Southeast Asia and really Asia in general uh, for extensive periods of time. Uh, and I like the energy in Kuala Lumpur. It's not entirely tangible. You might come here and not feel it. Now, a lot of people have come here and said, oh, Andrew, actually, yeah, I agree with you. But you might not feel it. One of my best friends lives in Bangkok. Uh, I've been vocal about the fact I, I don't get it. I don't feel it. My energy there is bad. I feel badly. when I went there for a, one day uh, about a year and a half ago. It's just like, get me out of here. I don't know what it is. I, I'm not anti-Bangkok. If you want to live there, that's great. I'm not trying to, to trash the place. Um, perhaps... It gets a higher rating and Kuala Lumpur gets a lower rating. I don't entirely get that, but energy is important. And so you want to watch, you know, how do I feel in a place? So if, if you're just in the process of exploring, you want to feel the energy that you have for a place. Once you're there, you want to feel when the energy starts to wear out. I do believe uh, that, you know, no one place is perfect. And uh, the ability to live in different places means you can perfect your energy, okay? I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio in the United States. People had much worse energy in the winter because it was cold and gray and miserable. And if you ask those people, they'd all like to leave in the winter, most of them, right? At least for part of the winter, the energy was down. And so what we talk about here at Nomad Capitalist with the Nomad Capitalist lifestyle is monitor when your energy's down. You know, I love Kuala Lumpur. After four, five, maybe six months, uh, my energy goes a little bit down. I'm looking for something else. Now, that could be as simple of, is, you know, go to Montenegro for two weeks in the summer, get it out of your system, and then come back. Because maybe you find out, you know, in Montenegro, I spent four months there, and it's like, that's a little much. It's a little too much for me. I had to downgrade it a little bit. So you want to watch the energy levels. It's not something that I think a lot of business owners think about. It's not something that I thought about for the longest time. But when I started to really analyze it, I realized that's important. You also want to understand your energy levels when you're traveling between your cities, for example. Um, this is why it's often worth for long haul flights paying more to be in a premium cabin on a flight because you have more physical energy, you're going to have fewer problems, you know, you have the nicer, you know, lines, people are nicer to you and it's just, it's just better energy. It's why I don't want to stay at hotels anymore. My energy at corporate hotels is drained listening to these people. So you want to make sure your energy is in good shape. And lifestyle hack number six is allow yourself some permission to have unstructured time. I work with a lot of high-level entrepreneurs. We're often go, go, go. We don't give ourselves permission to take that time off, especially you know, folks with what I call the Protestant work ethic, right? Go, go, go. You just, you just got off a flight, get to work. I like having you know, some unstructured time. When I land in a place, give yourself permission. Take a day or two, enjoy it. Have some gratitude for the ability that you can live in different places and experience the best that the world has to offer. And so when I land in a place, I wanna go out and uh, enjoy some of the local food and go to my favorite local places and just take you know, a day or two to really absorb it before I dive into things. What I think is also very important though is you know, allowing yourself to be somewhat unstructured. 
and not having to regiment everything. One thing I see some younger entrepreneurs now doing is they're reading these books on productivity and how to organize your life, and they're taking it really seriously. It's like, okay, every day I, I wake up at exactly seven o'clock, I have my tea at 7.13, I'm, I'm, I'm using the toilet at 7.21, and like this, and then, uh, and I think that giving yourself permission to be a bit unstructured is nice. Now, certainly if you're living in different time zones, you may need to adjust as you go. Again, understanding your energy is important. You know, For me, I like the idea that people who are on my team are starting work in my afternoon. I'll make my mornings less structured. That's the time when I'm less productive, I'm less awake, less energetic. I'm gonna make that unstructured. I'm gonna give myself permission to go to the gym uh, and meet my trainer when I feel like it and, and give myself some flexibility there. I'm gonna give myself some time just to kind of amble around and really, again, enjoy uh, where you're at. I think structuring everything down to the minute is gonna be counterproductive for a lot of people, but especially when you're going between, between different places, allow yourself permission to uh, force yourself to get the work done, but to also be uh, unstructured and not follow an exact schedule. So those are six lifestyle hacks that I've noticed. I'd love to hear your comments. If you are living the nomad capitalist lifestyle, what are some lifestyle hacks that you have found for yourself? What are your thoughts on these? How would you adapt them to your own needs? I want to hear from you and we may make another video uh, on this topic if you have more. So let me know if you'd like to, us to make another video as well. How can Nomad Capitalist help you? Four ways. Number one, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to make sure you get our new video every day. Number two, get a copy of Nomad Capitalist, the book. You'll learn a lot of my personal experiences over a dozen years of studying this stuff as well as exactly some of the strategies that you can use to build your Nomad Capitalist plan. Number three, if you're not sure where to start but you want to come and learn from my team and I, you want to come and mingle with like-minded people, learn more about our live conference, Nomad Capitalist Live. It's coming up soon. And number four, if you want some help right now because you've got a burning issue, you need something solved, you want to lower your taxes, get a second passport, or build the Nomad Capitalist lifestyle of your dreams, go to nomadcapitalist.com and click on Become a Client.